Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. We're always calling uh, teams and, and getting their, their, their thoughts and, hey, we might be thinking about this, if this. It's, 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 it's a big nested if loop thing we got going on, and every GM's involved, and we've had some great conversations. They've had some great conversations with us. Ultimately, we're ready to do whatever is presented to us. If you stand and pick it 12, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it the best that we can for this organization. And if it's not that, we'll do something different. I'll tell you what, if you thought Rick Spielman worked hard to avoid saying anything to the media in his <laughs> traditional Tuesday pre-draft <laughs> press conference. I think I think our guy, Quasi Adolfa Mensa, might have topped even Rick Spiel. He said a couple things we'll get into, but uh, nice job by Quasi, not giving away any. You know, he hit on all the classics, right? Not going to give away any information, but, hey, our phones have been busy. We've been calling. Some teams have been calling us. But he had we to be asked. Up. We that. could move back. We could stand pat. You never. He know. had to be. Rick always prefaced in the opening. The phone is ringing. We're open for business. Like that was part of his <laughs> uh, his preamble, right? In fact, in fact, sorry guys, hold on a second. I'm getting a call right now from an AFC general manager. Just uh, give me a yep. second. Can't right? Can't tell you what it is. Can't tell you what it's about. <laughs> yeah, AFC West. But I can't. I can't tell you. Can't yep. tell you who it is. But. Uh, um, so, all right, Mackie and Judd, Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment Therapy Speculation. We will be live on the Score North YouTube channel for some Wolves Game 5 vent line. We will be live at Surly Brewing Company for a special Purple Daily Surly Draft Party on Thursday night. So, all kinds of things happening this week. But, I th- all right, to me, the, you know, he didn't say a whole lot of truly relevant, interesting things because I mean, the, the point of these press conferences is mostly just like, ah, if you want to say something to, you know, if you want to send a message to the other general managers, you can. Otherwise, you don't have to. But he said, there's no amount of seventh-round picks that will equal the value of the first pick when he was asked about whether he believes in volume of players or impact players. Yeah. And he might as well have been closed circuit staring right into Rick Spielman's living room in South Florida when he said that, right? So I don't think you're going to see the Vikings, maybe I'm wrong here, trading back eight times to stockpile sixth and seventh round picks in this draft or any draft that Quasi oversees. One thing I love about sports and especially when there is change made and especially when there are obvious things that the former executive or coach did that drove people crazy is it always gets exaggerated. So, cause like Rick did, he traded back and it drove people nuts and you know what it drove me nuts at times, but don't you like how now it's it's uh there's no amount of last round draft picks that can equal a first round pick. Like the exaggeration well, there is but, awesome. But dude, in two thousand so <laughs> last year the Vikings actually did not have a seventh round pick. I think they might have traded. So that so they they did not pick in the seventh round last year. Yeah. But in 2020 and 2019, they had eight combined seventh round picks and five additional sixth round picks. So th- they had they drafted 13 players between 2019 and 20 Yes. after the fifth round. Yes. Now, some of those guys have had some, there's been some playing time in there. I mean, Ole Udo was your starting right guard, and Armand Watts has been a contributor on the interior. I mean, Judd's guy, Chris Boyd, Ola B.C. Johnson had a you know, nice little run there for a minute. So there's been, yeah. like, some some useful guys. But in general, yeah, I think uh, the more you can stockpile first, second, third round picks, however Damn. you go about that, that's, that's the best plan. And I am all for taking shots. I am all for the sh- crazy. Br- bring it on, baby. I love it. I love taking <laughs> shots. Taking shots is great from the podium, too. Um, what did you? The other thing that struck me was just how, you know, he was asked probably three or four different variations of questions about his philosophy on something. How yeah. much of a risk taker are you? Yeah. Or what, what do you believe about this? And he bristled more and more at every question that was about his beliefs. And he would mm-hmm. twist it to, listen, it's not about me. This is a we thing. And he said, Kevin O'Connell, our head coach, always bristles when when people say I instead of we. And mm-hmm. and I, I I love that, too. I, I actually think that's something that kind of drives me nuts when you're in a team setting and people say I, I, I instead of we, we, we. But yes. uh, but he he truly is trying to take, not not in like a scared way, but I think he's trying to take this spotlight off of him and say, no, I am just sort of the organizer of ideas and collaboration here for a lot of smart people that are in this room. 
you know, not that Rick was always a me, me, I, I guy because he used the word we too. But I think I think Rick really basked in the draft is my thing. This is what I like. I have systems and processes and analytics and a big magical draft board that goes, you know, four walls in a conference room. And I, I almost feel like Quasey, it's not that he's uncomfortable in the spotlight, but he just like he doesn't he doesn't want this to be the Quasey show, if that makes sense. This is the one thing that stood out to me about that press conference uh, that I actually thought was intriguing. And it's not necessarily any direct thing that he, he said, but it brings up a question in my mind. And it's this collaboration is awesome. It's well and good until you have to make a split second decision. And there, and there are times where you have to decide things like there is no, there's not time to go talk to Larry and Johnny and Ralph and Cheryl and, and and Susie, you well, have Ra- to, Ralph and Susie. I, I would definitely want their opinions. You have to make a decision, and I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you an example, and this is why only time will be the answer to my point here. Rocco Baldelli in game, in game. I think really struggles. I think he needs help, and and mm-hmm. I think that that's why Derek Shelton was good. Uh, I'm guessing b- before uh, Bell tragically passed that he he helped, and it's why Jace Tingler who managed is right by him because there are things about in game where I think Rocco relies on collaboration, which at times is fantastic, but at times you have to be the one to say, uh, guys and gals, this is what we're going to do. This is our decision. And we're all on board here. Correct. So that's my question off of, because what Quasi is saying as a fundamental philosophy of life, I think is fine. Like, I, I think that actually works because it makes people feel involved. It sounds like he does that, which, again, that's fine, too. But I guess my long term question off of how he phrased things, and, and I think it was Joe Schmidt who twice asked questions about what do you do? And you're right. He sort of got his he sort of got his back up a little bit. He did. Um, yeah, I guess my question is, OK. When it's draft night, you know, and you have to and like it is time to make a decision. And and Ted is saying this and Cheryl is saying that. And Susie, damn it, she's saying something else. <laughs> Quasi has to be the guy to say, OK, thanks. Here's what we're doing. Well, one, one of uh, one of the questions and I, I'm, I'm not going to like call out the media member. One, one of the questions was it was kind of a cliche. You know, how much of a risk taker are you in the draft? You know, what do you how do you handle players with sure. character issues? And character issues is such a huge cliche bin in NFL draft conversation. Because what does it mean? There's the weed guy, I guess. He, so, char- so who are all the different character issue profiles, right? There's weed guy. Rap there's guy. rap. There's yeah. There's rap sheet guy. Rap, sh- rap sheet guy worries Judd. But there's also like <laughs> doesn't really care about football as much as he should. Guy is in character yep. issues. Guy, that, right? That's a good one. Love Maybe it. Yeah. there's doesn't play through pain guy. You know, there's like five or six different guys that could be in the character issues bin. I love and that. I like that Quasey, he didn't just answer a question. He he said, he bristled and he goes, I don't like when, when people just say character issues. I, I, I need more specificity. I need, I need you to be more specific about yep. what is the character issue. He goes, we're talking about 20 and 21 year old kids. We're not fully formed adults. So right. there might be, a, okay, if you... If you shot somebody, like maybe you're right. maybe you're not on our draft board. Well, okay, if you're if you're if you disappeared and you're a little aloof and you're a little immature, like okay, we can, maybe we can work with that. I, don't know. I think he was asked that question because part of of Rick's uh, platform in this same press conference every year was we've red dotted sixteen guys, which <laughs> basically did. means they that. killed their families. <laughs> maybe uh, they drove the wrong way and killed uh, uh, you know six people. Jesus, John. <laughs> But I'm serious. Like Rick was like, we'd read, we read dotted guys, but he never told you why. So like, you didn't know what they did. Um, and I think that's why he was asked that question about, but you are correct. Like, like, I guess the question is, cause like we got, who cares, right? Like now really who cares, but to what you're saying, Phil, and where I guess you could boil it down. I think what the question was, was getting at was Rick really whiffed hard on Jeff Gladney. You know, he turned out to be a, I think, a bad guy. So I guess that was the question. But you're right. Like, character is just such a generic term. Yeah. So, all right. So that was that's kind of recapping the the Quasi 
pre-draft press conference there. This is Pecking Order Tuesday, and later in the show, we will also have, fingers crossed, a Randy in Cottage Grove seven-round Vikings mock draft. So I think hopefully he has overcome the trials and tribulations of his attempt at a mock draft last week where I think he had the same player going like three different times under two or three different names. And then it threw the whole draft off. And then he just hung up. Yeah, so are we going to get now? Now, do we know, guys? Are we going to get just the just the Vikings picks? Because because like there's always confusion then, and then he gets mad. I would like him us. to give the Vikings picks. I mean, we don't have all day, so right. Well, I will. I, the Vikings picks are the priority here. So I we'll think you start out by telling him what we want. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I'll lay expectations out. But for then sure. he'll get like flustered and. Confused. Well, I need you guys to stand behind me. Okay. Sometimes you guys think that I'm too mean to him, if, if and then you side with him, and it's like, well, now I'm I'm just trying to keep the ship going forward here and not hit an iceberg. So, it's anyhow, collaboration Tuesday, Phil. Uh, it's collaboration Tuesday, and it's pecking order Tuesday mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I'm Mackie and Judd, and Judd Zolgad has brought to the table the five best and worst Vikings first round picks since 2000, and I'll tell you what. This pecking order is presented by a new partner of ours. Let's give them a round of applause. Underdog Fantasy is a new partner of ours here before we get into this pecking order. So all three of us have been dabbling. And, yes, it is so easy to use the Underdog Fantasy app and the UnderdogFantasy.com website. The best and easiest way to play fantasy sports and get a sweat on games tonight or in the future. It's so easy to use that Judd is using it. I mean, think about that. Declan showed me. Declan showed me. It didn't take long, Dex. Other duties as assigned, helping Judd Zolgad with apps. That that, uh-huh, that, that helps. And 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 Judd and Judd won some money last night. Dude, look at you, man. I was trying to yeah. get a hold of Declan for like an hour because we had to send some uh, like some data and analytics to one of our bosses. And Declan's like, I'm sorry, I've been teaching Judd how to log into an app for like 90 minutes here. But I'm glad that we we got you covered take, now. It didn't take that long. It was actually <laughs> very simple. I'm in, and yes, I won last night on the NBA. So God knows yeah. when it comes to football and hockey, I might be a rich man. So Underdog Fantasy lets you draft a fantasy team in minutes for games tonight or for the season across multiple different sports. Tonight, for instance, uh, there's a big basketball game that uh, you know you might want to pick some players for. You can also play pick em games like over-unders and such. Sign up now with the promo code SCORE, S-K-O-R, and Underdog Fantasy will double your first deposit up to $100 in bonus cash when you deposit $10 or more. Uh, we are pumped about this partnership, and it's been a blast, all of us playing in the last couple days. So uh, <laughs> promo code SCORE so you can let them know that we sent you along. Judd, are you ready for football? Your packing. Judd, yeah, you got you to you take yourself out of the Underdog Fantasy app what? here. Yeah, and, Over-unders. Uh, yeah, no, we got to. For tonight's game. All right. Okay. I'm going uh, over on a couple of those ant. Yeah, I have, I have some way. overs. I have some so, overs. Ready. Some overs, baby. Let's do it. Thanks a lot, Ready guys. Go. I was trying. Yeah. So <laughs> but the Vikings five best and five worst first round picks since 2000. I'm going to ask you as part of Collaboration Tuesday. You want me to start with the best or the worst? I think we start with the best. Let's let's, let's, the best. let's go with the good okay. news mm-hmm. here. Okay? okay, let's do it. The best five picks since the year 2000. For your Vikings, we will start at five and work our way up. Number five on the list, 2013. A draft that had, I believe, three first-round picks in it for the Vikings. But the fifth best pick since 2000 at number 25, Xavier Rhodes. Xavier Rhodes. And by the way, I thought that to me that this this part of the list came pretty easily. So like this didn't take a, a lot of internal debate personally. So I'm curious if you guys agree or mm-hmm. disagree with, with my top five. Number four, the 22nd pick in the 2009 draft. The weed guy. The weed guy fell. This is, in my time covering the team, I have never been as certain that the Vikings would take a guy if he fell to them as I was in this case, because at number 22, the Vikings <laughs> took Percy Harvin, who then obviously played an instrumental role in the Brett Favre season of getting to the NFC championship game. That's an interesting one. I almost feel like, and I, I we'll see what the rest of your list is, but 
It was a good pick. I'm glad they made the pick. It also feels like his career as a Viking was sort of incomplete. You know, that I agree with that. He, he could have been so much more, and he was valuable, and he, mm -hmm. he did help them win a bunch of games in 2009, especially. Mm -hmm. But he also might have been like five or eight years ahead of his time as a player, right? I mean, he's he was Debo Samuel before Debo Samuel. Absolutely. Absolutely. But he he fell to them so far, and, and without being a character slash weed guy, he's what, Phil, a top five pick? Probably, yeah. So... So he's at four on my list. At number three, a draft pick that the Vikings actually intentionally or not, we still don't know, screwed up, but got the best player that they possibly could. 2003 ninth overall pick, Kevin Williams. Borderline, he's not, but he is a, in my opinion, borderline Hall of Fame player. Uh, he did things as a defensive tackle that, that are now commonplace that at that time we didn't see much of. So he is third on my list. Yeah, one of the more, just because of his position and because his personality was so understated, Yep, he wasn't a wallflower because I think when he needed to say something in the locker room, he, I mean, he was always available as a team leader, but he just, one of the more underrated and underappreciated Vikings for a few different reasons. Yep, and at his best, a dominant player. So he's third. Number two on my list. And this one, this is probably debatable, but it's a work in progress. And I think the first one makes sense. But number two on my list, 2020, first first round pick for the Vikings, Justin Jefferson. I actually debated briefly putting Jefferson third and and Williams second, hmm. but Jefferson's just been so good I so think quickly. By the time it's all said and second. done. He's going to be number one by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, I agree. On this, well, at least on on this list as of now. Yep. But number one for now on this list fell to the seventh pick of the 2007 draft. And, and in retrospect, no matter how we feel about him, I think put together, although he won't go away now, a Hall of Fame career, Adrian Peterson. Peterson, I think, is one right now. And you're right. Long term, Jefferson might be it, but I think AP right now has to be atop that list. Yeah, no, that's I think that's fair. That's fair. That's very fair. So Peterson, JJ, Kevin Williams, Percy Harvin, Xavier Rhodes. Who was just off the list? Any any honorable mentions in there for you? I mean, Bryant McKinney was a first round. Was he mm -hmm. in the was he in the two he was in the two thousands, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes, he was. Hmm. And yeah, he was um there there were more guys in contention to get on the worst list than the best list. The first if round has not sense. been kind to the Vikings outside of a few here and there in the last like eight years. It's yes. been kind of to me, those five were pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really struggle. I, I had a little bit of internal debate on how to rank them, but I thought as far as the top five goes, that they were the top five. I like it. I like it. Okay, now this is this is probably the one that you've had the most fun stockpiling here, which is the whiffs, <laughs> the top five biggest whiffs since 2000 oh, in the first I, round. I, this game... It's quite a few of them. This came with a lot of debate, internal de debate. As I chugged my Surleys last night, I had great internal debate about how this list fell, and... I am open to the fact that I think that there will be flat-out disagreement with this list. Oh, boy. All right. Let's do it. All right. Number five on this list, the 18th pick of the 2019 draft, Garrett Bradbury. Wow. wow. Garrett Bradbury. Okay. Now, okay. now uh, it's hard to argue this. I know, but this, man. I know, but here's, but here's the problem. You're going to, as I go through this, Realize I left at least two, if not three, get guys off that probably deserve it. So, uh, Garrett Bradbury, I, I just decided the body of work is is pretty substantial, and it's pretty damn bad. So I put him fifth. Hmm. Number four could be higher, but I don't think so. The twenty third pick of the two thousand sixteen draft, Laquan Treadwell. Yeah, He's fourth. Now again, man. 
I know, but that's wait a big whiff. Keep, yeah, no, it's a big whiff. Wait till I keep going because he would be he would be I think oh, easily well. second on lots of lists. Like lots of teams m- might have him as their second, if not first, worst pick since two thousand. Laquantasaurus Rex. Yeah, didn't he have like he had like two or three nicknames coming out of college, right? L- yeah, Laquantasaurus Rex, and there's another one in there too. Lo- loved running up those steps at Mankato. Love, love, love going up those steps. Drove Zimmer crazy. He works yeah. on what he's good at. Drove <laughs> Mike up the wall, and in this case, I think Mike was probably I, right. I was told too, like behind the scenes, that he was the kind of guy that, like, if you ripped him in practice, like they had to like always be coddling him. Like they had to always be like Laquan, no, we love you and believe in you. Like he would get incredibly down on himself. Like incredibly down on himself to the point where he had to be basically babied and put his like pat on the back and say everything's gonna be okay. See, I think that's uh, you know Pat talked about that with Carl Anthony Towns on rapping with Royce today. That's like the, and I know it's cliche to say this generation of athletes, but there are it's not everyone, but you know there's it's sort of the AAU generation of your you've got social media validation coming in your whole life and everyone's everyone knows how big of a star you can be when you're 12 and then all of a sudden you get to the NFL and or the NBA and life slaps you in the face and it's weird it's you haven't had to deal with that before and what's mm-hmm. weird too is Tre- Treadwell was such a flop that like you you think Dex by by year two or so he'd be used to it right right like cat yeah. cat's been a star his whole life so like I almost sort of get cat but it's like <laughs> Laquan you start to suck yeah <laughs> okay, so Bradbury, Treadwell. Yep, number right. three. By the way, three and two from the same draft. So oh. I think you you know exactly oh. where I'm going. Number three, 2005, 18th pick. Oh, Erasmus James. Oh my yeah. gosh, dude. I mean, I I think he deserves it. I think he deserves three. He was going to be the guy. That was going to give the Vikings, you know, finally the pass rushing presence Dude. from the right end, right? Like he was going to be the guy that was going to get to the quarterback. Marvelous Big Ten career at Wisconsin. And I mean, he was, he is the definition of a bust. He didn't like football. He didn't turn out to be that good. He couldn't I'll, handle it. I'll tell you, the honorable mentions are stacking up here because I know who I, know. I now know who your number yeah, two and yeah, number one are going to be. And the yeah. honorable mentions. I know, are that's just, right. my point. Gosh. That's my point. It's almost fun to do a top five because I think we can debate who probably should be on this list much more so. Because a top ten would be simple. Like a top ten, easy. But like you're right, like a top five now, <laughs> this is gonna be this is going to be fun. All right, number two, uh, number two. Could have been one, but I don't think he's one because one is such a bust. Number two, seventh overall pick, the Randy Moss pick back from Oakland 2005, Troy the Hands Williamson. Dude, imagine him not being number one. I know. And and you're right about this. Like, you're not you're not wrong in your ranking, but imagine right, but him feels, not being wrong. number one. Then why does it feel so wrong? He literally went to... He, didn't he get like Nike contacts or something? Or he went to some Nike training Nike thing? Nike Vision Camp. Nike Vision Oregon Camp. Because he was, they decided he wasn't, they decided he couldn't hang on to the football because he needed help tracking the ball and they worked with him on his vision. Did he go to that vision camp before or after the ball hit him in the face against, well, it actually happened twice. The ball hit him in the face in Green Bay on a Thursday night and the ball hit him in the face once or twice against Denver. That Denver game was his last game as a Viking. Okay. You know, the okay, the 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 meme that people put out on the internet is him wide open down the field and the ball just like bouncing off his chest, right? But what people forget about that game is he came back in later on like a third and eight or a third and ten and flashed Mm -hmm. wide open on a slant. Like no like it was a busted coverage. (laughs) And the ball rifled right off his chest and he just walked back to the sidelines and that was it, man. That was it. And now I think he's made a career out of being a motivational speaker. Yeah. And so credit Matt to Foley. him. But yeah. He's Matt Foley. <laughs> I'm a receiver. Buddies. We're going to be Go pals. You're oh, not yeah. going to amount to anything. <laughs> um, yes. And the Denver game was his last game. I believe also the two passes in that game that you're discussing, Phil. I think, and I'm not joking here. God rest his soul. I think they might have been the two greatest passes as a Viking Tavares threw. Just bullets, man. Yeah. Just bullets dimes. Perfect. Dimes. Perfect. Does, yeah. Okay, does, 
side podcast episode at some point. Does T Jack's career pan out differently if he builds more confidence connecting on those throws to Troy Williamson? Did Troy Williamson ruin Tavares Jackson's confidence and career? The deep ball. My the, column. The the deep ball he <laughs> threw that went off Troy's face mask was just a perfect throw. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, and the, and the number one ranking on this list is going to be presented by our friends at Valley Park Medical Clinic because we're talking about dudes with performance issues, football related. If you have performance issues in the bedroom. Valley Park is dedicated to providing breakthrough ED remedies to men in the greater Minneapolis area. All right. Their approach is medical. You meet with a medical provider who's going to review your entire medical history, examine you, and supervise your treatments, which are going to be surgery free, drug free, and non invasive. If you want to find out more about this highly trained team that works with you in a discreet manner, go to valleyparkmedicalclinic.com. Valleyparkmedicalclinic.com. Back to Judd. And Speaking number, of, back to Judd. Yeah, 52. Let's let's be honest here. All right, number one on the list. It has to be. Like, I this list was so difficult. This part was so tough. But anyway, yeah, that's right. 12th overall pick, 2011. The man that was going to solve Rick Spielman's problems. The young quarterback that Rick thought was going to be his guy. The guy that Trent Dilford destroyed the day after, I think, the night of the draft. Young Christian Ponder is number one. So Ponder, Williamson, Erasmus James, Laquan Treadwell, and Garrett Bradbury. Okay, thoughts, because, Phil, you nailed it. Leaving guys off this was excruciating. Yeah, I've got thoughts on both lists, and we do have to get to our guy Randy in Cottage Grove here. He is uh, ready to rock with his Ooh, nice. with his mock, but... Um, I think I think you mostly nailed the list here. I would say a couple honorable mentions for sneaky good Vikings first round picks. Chris Hovan was really good for like six or seven years. Yeah. I don't know. I I might bump Percy Harvin because I don't know that he lived up to potential, but uh, Chris Hovan was was rock solid. And Michael Bennett had a couple thousand yard seasons. I think he had two thousand yard seasons, didn't he, as a starting running back? So he was a, he was a pretty solid first round pick. Matt Khalil. The guy on, on, on the, the five worst, like Matt Khalil had a great first season and then was a disaster afterwards. Injuries yeah. were in play there. Yeah. Uh, Chad, Chad Greenway. Chad Greenway was a first-round pick in 2006. I feel mm-hmm. like I might swap Percy Harvin or Xavier Rhodes for Chad Greenway, but no, we Harrison. can fight on that. Yeah, Harris, wasn't Harrison Smith a first? No, or was he a second-round pick? No, first-round no, pick. And, he was first and round pick. First Damn, round man, pick. he's a freaking Hall of Famer. Yeah, I would have had him on mine. Yeah, I got to put Harrison Smith on here. Harrison Smith, uh, what year was he drafted? 2000. They traded back in to get him. 2012. Yeah. Yeah, 2012. I I would probably put Harrison Smith instead of Percy Harvin on here. And I might put Matt Khalil. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I don't know who you bump on the bad list. (laughs) A bad list, I can't, I can't bump Can't bump anyone. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, Smith, Smith is a good choice. I, um, Percy to me, I, I put him on in part though, because he played such an instrumental role on that 2009 team going to the conference title game. But yeah, but Ro, I loved Rhodes. So, cause he was for that, that time period with uh, Mike especially a shutdown guy but yeah Smith I could yeah I guess I would let's let's sorry Percy Percy yeah it was a good run for Percy but he was not even the best wide receiver on the 2019 that was Sidney Rice and then his career yeah. got kind of topsy-turvy after that so I see what you're doing there with Percy mm-hmm. I think Harrison Smith's got to be above Percy the worst list is I I am that's football <laughs> I mean, Hughes, Gladney, Cordero. Yeah. Actually, Percy Percy was the freaking rookie of the year, too. He was rookie. Yeah, he was great, man. He was awesome, man. He was Debo before Debo. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. That's Judd's packing order of the five best and worst first round picks since 2000 for the Minnesota Vikings. All right. We got to collect ourselves here and then see if we can connect without problems to our guy, Randy, in Cottage Grove. (laughs)